everybody wanted and go to our most added players over on NFL.com. Isaiah likely far and away the leader after his huge game against the Chiefs. And then Jordan Mason, another primetime performer. J.K. Dobbins right after that, followed up by Baker Mayfield, Alan Lazard, and Rashid Shahid. So let's get some projections for some of the guys that everybody was rushing out to get. Like the guy across the street, J.K. Dobbins. Mark. Yeah. Well, first doing? of all, all the guys know this. They were gone in all my leagues. I don't really know what you guys were doing here. They weren't available <laughs> anywhere. Uh, my leagues. <laughs> uh, yeah, J.K. Dobbins was was fantastic. And I will take an L on this one because I just didn't know. You know, I, I, I want to see him come back and succeed. But after a couple of major injuries, you just didn't know what he had left. Looked great against the Raiders last week. I think he's going to continue to look good again this week. I got a projected for 17 points. He was able to run all over the Raiders. This week, he gets a Carolina defense that looked awful last week. Nearly 60% of the snaps for Dobbins. Just about an even share of rush attempts with Gus Edwards, but uh, a ton more yards. Even ran 13 routes, had three targets, so really contributing to the passing game as well. Look, Jim Harbaugh complimented his pass protection skills, which means they feel confident having him out there on third downs. That only helps his value, so I think he continues to play well. Look, I will look. Daniel Jeremiah before the season said J.K. Dobbins is one to watch out for. I was skeptical. I apologize, DJ. I will listen from now on. I'm sorry. I had so many people in my mentions like, what league is J.K. Dobbins even on the waiver in? At least 60% of them, as you <laughs> saw there. Uh, my guy wasn't even on the most added list. He was on my most added list. I went to bed last night with no Tyler Johnson. I woke up, and he's on five different teams and counting. Uh, but I do believe he is going to be the Puka Nakua replacement. Demarcus Robinson was the wide receiver three before Puka got hurt. His snaps and his routes did not change after the Puka injury. Tyler Johnson played more snaps than Robinson, and he was running the Puka routes. He's a better suited to be the yak guy, and this is a very valuable role in this offense. Before it was Puka, it was the Robert Woods role, so you want exposure to the Rams offense, and Tyler Johnson is getting overlooked on a lot of waivers. You could get him for cheap. He scored 13 fantasy points in a half last week. I wouldn't be surprised if he gives us 15 or more in week two. And it's a spot in a route tree that we know Sean McVay loves. That yeah. got Odell Beckham Jr. to come in and run the backside dig. We're not saying Tyler Johnson is going to be OBJ, uh, but it's just Matthew Stafford's throwing the ball. You're going to want pieces yep. of that offense. Speaking of slinging it, speaking of guys who played for Sean McVay, Baker Mayfield exists, and a lot of people <laughs> realize that, hey, Baker Mayfield throwing to Mike Evans and Chris Godwin is something that you would like to have. And going up against the Detroit Lions on Sunday, the one spot on the Bucks' offense that I was concerned about against the Washington Commanders was being able to run the ball. We saw the Lions stifle the Rams' run game. I think it's going to be all Baker. And so 19 points is probably a safe projection uh, for one Baker Mayfield on the road in a playoff revenge game. He's going to try extra hard against the Detroit <laughs> Lions. So those guys probably, again, if you're in the best fantasy league in the world, they're not available. <laughs> Let's go on down the list and get some waiver wire leftovers uh, for some guys who might still be able to go get picked up out of the fridge, Mike. I like A.D. Mitchell for the Indianapolis Colts, and I know it was Alec Pierce that caught the long touchdown, but you know who had more opportunities? Mitchell. I, you see there, I haven't projected for 13, and the truth of the matter is he could give you like five or he could give you 35 because you're seeing on the screen here, he was overthrown on that one. He was overthrown on one that would have been a 70-yard touchdown, and then there was a third one where he created space downfield and Richardson missed him. They're going to connect in some of these games, and the ceiling is sky high. And what I really love, Mitchell was doing his job. He was getting open. He was creating separation. I know it didn't happen in week one, but that doesn't mean it's not going to happen the rest of the way. The opportunity is what we care about, especially when you're looking at just a one-game sample size. I, I'm a big fan of Mitchell this week. I liked him as a sleeper last week, and as you mentioned, the missed opportunities are what sort of sting there, but there's a lot of reason to be excited, especially keep an eye on Josh Downs. If he's still banged up and can't go, that still means more opportunities, more routes, and potentially more targets for Mitchell. Uh, I'm thinking a guy, though, on the other side of that game, and that's going to be Emmanuel Wilson. And we saw Wilson last Friday against the Eagles get a lot of opportunity in the first half, and at least for the first part of the game, he was more efficient with his touches than Josh Jacobs was. Now, Jacobs started to get going in the second half of that one, but I think this week, with no Jordan Love, with Malik Willis expected to start, I think the Packers are going to have to lean on the ground game a little bit more. It cannot be Josh Jacobs alone. 
That's where Emmanuel Wilson comes in. Uh, last week, the Colts gave up 213 rushing yards to the Houston Texans, so they can be had on the ground. Wilson also got three targets in the game, speaks to his availability and, and possibilities in the passing game. That's not something that Josh Jacobs does a lot of. So if you're looking for a deep waiver wire, look, I mentioned it. If you didn't get Jordan Mason, uh, if you weren't able to get J.K. Dobbins, and you're just needing to fill a flex spot potentially, Emmanuel Wilson, I think, has some real value this week. And, and also the fact that he has that number in the 30s and the, the wrist wraps are extended. Yes. <laughs> he, he gives Amon Green vibes. Yes. The vibes are very Amon Greenish. So <laughs> go get uh, Emmanuel <laughs> Wilson uh, coming up here for week two. I'm looking over at Jacoby Myers, who actually led the team in receiving yards in week one uh, with Devontae Adams out on the field. And I think considering the, the area and range of targets that Gardner Minshew generally goes for, he might be a safe option if you, you lose a guy, you got a guy uh, on IR if you need some help for a particular week. Eight, nine, ten points may be a solid floor for Jacoby Myers week after week after week for this Raiders offense that I do think uh, has the potential to get a little bit better and maybe uh, the Chargers are better on defense than we think uh, that they are uh, with Jim Harbaugh and company coming to Los Angeles. More to come here on NFL Fantasy Live.